So the so the main advantage of the matched Z transform is that we can we can match up complex conjugate conjugate poles. So if we and we do this again with our example. So our example is again our transfer function we had before because this makes it clear. So if we have our analog transfer function which looks like this s minus and then s infinity and then this is s minus s infinity star so like that then we just leave them together here and so the idea is here transform it as a product and the same would be up up here but in this case we have only the s here and this gives us a, a real zero anyway so let's just do that so let's write our analog transfer function again down and transform this step by step s minus s infinity and then s minus s infinity star so remember these are complex conjugate complex conjugates and so and so now we have so these are two poles here so that's a pole and that's a pole we know that so this one is now a zero and this obviously turns zero at s s zero equals zero so that's our zero here so that's a pole at s in s infinity and that's a pole at s infinity star and so with that recipe we can directly transform this into our digital filter with our matched z transform and so the zero here is one minus and then e2 zero t z2 minus one so that's our zero from from here so this zero we have here and so then our at the bottom here we do what we've done before so one minus e2 s infinity t z2 minus one and one minus e2 s infinity star z2 minus one so with that so we see already this is obviously just one and here we have got a product of these two here so this we cannot directly turn this into a circuit diagram now because we have a product here but what we can do is we can just multiply that out so if we on top we have got one minus z2 minus one and then at the bottom here we've got one and then minus and then e to s infinity t z2 minus one and then minus e to s 
infinity star t z2 minus 1 and then plus we've got here our z2 minus 1 squared now so we have here e2 s infinity t plus s infinity star t and then this z2 minus 2 and this already gives us now a data flow diagram because here these are our FIR coefficients and here we've got our our IRR coefficients we just need to just put these two together here and then we've got basically a delay term by one time step here and a delay term by two time steps so let's just quickly just rewrite this in a form that we can turn this into a filter so h of z and so this one was one one minus and then z two minus one and then this is here one minus e two s infinity t plus e two s infinity complex conjugate t z two minus one and then plus e two and then and then this is here s infinity plus s infinity star t and then this z2 minus 2 so the nice thing is now about this here that this IIR coefficient here so let's see this is an IIR coefficient that this one is real and and this coefficient here is also real that's easy to see because this is just the real value the real value of s infinity here this is not so easy to see what this gives us here but this gives us also a real value because it's just a rotation in a in the in the complex plane so we have essentially the one value if this is one here this is real and this is imaginary then this this could you could be for example s e to s infinity t whereas the complex conjugate is pointing down here so that's e to s infinity star t and so if we are adding these these two up here so if we add them then then the addition of this one here is just this vector here yeah so the real part of this so that's the sum of it and so therefore also here this this coefficient is real and this one is real and so therefore the whole the whole filter operation is real valued okay now let's turn this into a data flow diagram so the data before we can draw the data flow diagram, let's just quickly recap what our transfer function is here. So it's 1 minus z2 minus 1. And you could just also put a 1 in front of this one here. And this is our FIR part. And then we've got the IIR part is 1 minus e2 s infinity t and then plus e2 s infinity star t z2 minus 1 plus and then e2 2 times 
real value of s infinity t. This makes this fraction here a bit longer and then this delayed by two time steps. So the real the real value here just comes from the fact that if we are making the sum out of s infinity plus s infinity star that that's here the imaginary part cancels out and we're just having the real part left essentially two times the real part here so so this one here this bit here this is our IRR filter part so now we can draw our circuit diagram so let's put create an input here x of n and then a summation node here for our recursive part and then we need two delay steps because we've got in our recursive part one delay step and two delay steps here and then obviously also we need an our output summation node for our FIR part and so now we just need to wire up the filter here so let's start here with this first coefficient here. So this one is here our first coefficient. Curly bracket underneath here. So that's our first IIR coefficient. And this is delayed by one time step. So then therefore we, we go in here and feed this back to our input here to this input summation node. So remember sign inversion, so we multiply this just with a positive factor of that. So this is multiplied by e2 s infinity t plus e2 s infinity star t. So that's the, the factor for for the first delay step so now the second one is this one here. And this feeds feeds back here with a with a positive sign. So and therefore the actual feedback is negative here. So so this is here multiplied by minus e two two real of s infinity t. So this is our our IIR um, part here. So that's IIR. So now we just need to create our output. So the output is simple. So we just take the undelayed part and send this out here to our output without any further modification and then then we've got just the negative part of the once time time step delayed version here so we multiply this here by minus one 